All right, so we're all loaded up and we're headed over to my shop now to uh, get it in the booth so we can prime it. So we had it loaded up on the trailer. We're all set up and uh, let's head on over there. I was just checking the straps, making sure they were tight. You don't want to have this loose, so let's head on over. All right, so we're in the booth and we're getting ready to bag it up for the primer. And uh, we're gonna prime this thing up tonight. So let's go ahead and bag it. And that way we'll get it all primed up. We've already got the doors primed, the trunks primed, and we'll be priming this and then we'll be cutting it in. So that's the next stage of this job after we prime it up here. So go ahead and watch as I wrap it up and get it set up for primer. So we have it all wrapped up now and uh, we're gonna get ready to uh, prep saw it and get it ready to prime. So if you're new to this video or new to this channel, this is a job that we're going through from start to finish and we're gonna be putting a candy on this house of colors. So we've already done quite a bit of work. Check out the last couple of videos that we've done and now we're on the stage to prime in the body. So this car has all been 180 blocked with the big kid blocks. And we have it all bagged up here. I wanted to get it laser straight. So we've already had this car painted and you could see in the last videos, it was a nice looking car, but it needed to be blocked to be straighter. So this was our goal. And we finally got it all blocked out and bagged up. And I wanted to really try to cover up as much as I could in the wheelhouses because I have all my suspension pretty much new and fresh in there. So you guys see the old school wheel covers. Definitely funny bringing them back out to give it a little bit more protection. I had them over here. I said, you know what? Let me throw them on it and maybe it'll cover them up a little bit, but we're all ready to go. And like I said, we're all blocked out with 180. I'm gonna go ahead and prep saw it. And then we're using the P30B black primer on this. It's a 4-1-to-1 from Sherwin-Williams. Really, really good stuff. And it's black and I like it because you get to see the body work and it leaves a sheen so you can actually block it with its own guide coat. You don't have to guide coat this primer. So let's get into cleaning it and then we'll start spraying the primer on it. So we're actually gonna see this thing a different color after this and we'll be black with the black primer on it. So I got my desiccate filter. I've got another De uh, Devilbus filter in the back of the booth I've showed you guys last time and that's one of the charcoal uh, toilet paper styles with the charcoal filter in it. So we got that, a big DeVilbus in the back, refrigerant dryer after the compressor. And then we have this other one more step of that desiccate for that portable unit I showed you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe it now and then we'll be priming it. So we got it all prepped all down and you want to make sure you let that dry and get all that solvent off the car before you start the prime. So give it about 10 minutes, let it flash off, make sure everything is evaporated off the panel because that sand scratch can sometimes leave some of that solvent in the car and you don't want to trap that under the primer. So, you know, where we got to this stage, guys, I did it all at home like you would. So this is just because I don't want to overspray my garage. But if you were to build a little bit of a tent system, you could prime the car at your house. Just make sure that you have the proper uh, dryer system or refrigerant or anything like that for the moisture. Because I was telling you, it'll, it'll negate all the work you do on this job if you get moisture trapped under the paint. And it'll try to it come out later. So make sure you have the right... Uh, dryer systems for your air compressor because it's very crucial to that job lasting and not having moisture in it. So as we come to this stage here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, 
start priming it. I went ahead and did it with the microfiber towels. That way it's kind of tacking it and cleaning it at the same time. And a lot of you guys know about the microfiber towel deal uh, that came out. Somebody uh, figured it out and now everybody's doing it because it really works good. It cleans it well and gets all that sanding dust out of the uh, sand scratches. So we're ready to go and we're gonna mix up the primer full one to one and make sure you guys have a respirator if you're doing this at home. I got my hood on and I got my uh, paint suit, so. So we got one coat of primer on it and that's with the Pro-Lite 1.4 I'm using on this because it's a bigger job and I want to get around it nice and smooth so I want the primer to lay out slick that way I don't have a lot of blocking because the slicker you lay the primer the less you have to take off because you don't have all that orange peel so get your primer down slick and that way you leave more primer on the surface than you do if you put down a real lumpy bumpy primer. You're taking more off by the time you get down to where you need to be, all the primer's gone. So put that primer on slick just like you want that car to look and it'll save you for sanding and it'll have more primer on the job when you're done. So we got one coat on the whole job and uh, we're going to go ahead and put one more coat on it. And I might do three coats, but it looks like I'm just going to go ahead and do two coats on here is all I'm going to need. So because we are going to be sealing this job when we paint it. So I don't need to keep putting more materials on this. I just need something to seal this off, put a good 2K on it. And this is a good product because it has the flex additive in it. And I like the way, even though this isn't a flexible part, I still like having that flex additive in the primer because to me it doesn't shrink as much because it's more has uh, more flex to it. So it doesn't suck down into the sand scratches as much as some of them old school talky primers. So let's go ahead and put coat two on.
All right, so that's coat two. And we went ahead and put two heavy coats of primer on it so we have enough to sand and still leave a lot on the vehicle. You guys knew I blocked it like crazy, so there's not gonna be much to taking off any of this and really making different colors because I blocked it so hard before I actually primed this car with the uh, clear that was on it from before. So look how nice of a beautiful sheen that that primer does for a, a black. And I don't know, maybe we should just make this a hot rod black cutlass. It almost looks cool just like it is. Now nah, we're not doing that for sure, but look at that beautiful primer that Sherwin produces with that uh, P30. And they make a white, a gray, and uh, the black. So I love the black because it shows everything and it just gives a beautiful finish so you can block it and see it when you sand it, it dulls out and gives you a nice uh, guide coat that's already built into the primer. So we're definitely getting along here now. We're making some progress and we got rid of most of the orange that's on the car. So I hope you guys like this one. And uh, I'm gonna be doing another video this week, coming out this weekend, hopefully, of starting to jam the actual body of the car. So we're gonna pull the fenders off and then go ahead and cut in the body. And then we'll be cutting in all the parts to bolt back up to the car. That way we can shoot the outside. So 